Hi, welcome to the video tutorials to support your use of the Thinking Maths lessons that are being run under the uh, SF, SSIF Maths project with Carmel College. The aims of these videos is to ease your planning burden. It's to give you a, it's to provide you a glimpse and insight into the, uh, give you an overview of the lessons so that you can enjoy them, you can have a fruitful time with your children and, and promote fruitful thinking. What we want you to do in the lessons and the aim of these videos is to help you focus on responding to your pupils in the lesson and not trying to really teach them as such. We do a lot of teaching. We don't really want you to judge pupils against your lesson plan how you, far you've got through the plan. We want you to respond to their mathematical thinking and the mathematical thinking that the lessons promote. It isn't about calculation and recall. So there's a, there's a need to explain the difference and we just felt the video tutorials would give you an overview, a handle on the lessons so that when you go and teach them, you can focus on what's happening in the moment and respond to the pupils. The Kane lessons or Thinking Math lessons has always been about providing a balanced diet of thinking lessons uh, within Key Stage 3. It doesn't happen very often. We're challenging the pupils. There are many other key features which I'll come on to later. There might not be any writing. Your job is to facilitate discussion and to manage discussion and to manage children's thinking and possibly even have dialogue in the books later following the, the lesson because the, the activities don't really stop when the bell holds, so to speak, you can carry on. There'll be things that they want to carry on thinking and talking about. <coughs> so for each of the lessons, I'll try and give an overview of what's going on in the lesson and show you the typical things that happen in the lesson. But this really isn't a substitute to reading the lesson plan for yourself and allowing, and because really we want you to make the correct decisions for your pupils in that moment. There are lots of ideas in the folder, so I suggest you read it after you've seen the video and get a feel for the lesson that you might conduct. It might be different to this one, but at least you know where it's starting from and you can focus on the thinking because we are dealing with how 11-year-olds look at the world. And they are not mathematicians, they are 11. And there are certain things that 11-year-olds need to be focused upon in the thinking that's going to help them mature into mathematical 15 and 16-year-olds. So what I, what I hope to do is just model how I might start the lesson, how you might use the resources, but you can then build upon this. You can, you can develop the activity. You can choose where you want to go because at some point in the lesson, you will need to make some mathematical decisions in response to what's happening, and that is fine. So in reality, you might end up teaching a very different lesson, but the thinking focus is the same. <coughs> so the thinking math lessons is uh, coming from a, a research perspective about how 11 year olds view the world. And I just want to show you some, give you an idea of the, the data that we've been able to collect. As part of a science project, we did some test thinking testing with the three and a half thousand pupils all around the UK. And, and one of the questions was the pupils had to calculate the volume of this cuboid of plasticine and you show them that five centimetre cubes fit at the side and you tell them 12 fit on the top. And quite a lot of pupils can calculate that the volume of that is 60 centimetres cubed. Then, so that question isn't scored, it isn't marked. What you, ask them to, what you then do is you do a whole series of questions based on the plasticine. There's a lot of questions in the test, I'm just focusing on these ones. So for instance, you would fill this up with water to the top so no more water can come out and you'd tie a piece of string around this and tell the pupils to ignore the string and you'd drop the plasticine gently into the water and water would come out and you'd ask them how much would come out, i.e. 60 centimetres cubed. You'd then fill it up to 500 and put the plasticine in and they would see it's gone up and you say to them how much has it gone up by? Right? You then in front of them turn this cuboid into a sphere and you do the same again, you ask them exactly the same question. At 500 when I put the sphere in, will it go more, higher or lower than the cuboid of plasticine? And then in front of them, you turn this into a sausage shape and you ask them the same question again. What is really interesting is this same test has been carried out since the 70s. 
And when the data was first published in 1981, 75% of 11-year-olds said that if you change the shape, it would displace the same amount of water. In our sample of 3,500 students, only half the 11-year-olds got that correct. So half of the 11-year-olds are able to, many of them are able to calculate that this is 60 centimetres cubed, but they cannot conserve volume. That means they are not looking at the world in the way that we want them to do to, just to cope with a lot of the concepts they're going to be introduced to. And this type of thinking that the shape doesn't matter and other aspects of it to do with density is called formal operational thinking, abstract thinking. So the Kane lessons promote, the thinking maths lessons promote abstract thinking. So there is a structure to the lessons. So the first part of the lesson will be some kind of context where the maths is hidden. So they engage with the context. So in the first lesson, it's, uh, it's drawing shapes on, a, on, a, uh, on triangular dotted paper. But quite quickly, you then start moving into mathematical relationships. So it's the relationship that develops from the context. And then there's a third episode or a third part of the lesson where you start dealing with abstract mathematical concepts. You start modeling the maths because you can't, the reality is it, it, a letter isn't a number, but in maths we can think about a letter as a number. So we go through the stages to push this more abstract thinking in Piagetian terms. So in that case, in many of the lessons, you might go beyond the level that you normally go to because you're pushing them through these stages. They engage with the context, you handle some mathematical relationship, and then you abstract that mathematical relationship. So you're going from a very concrete situation to a very abstract situation. Now this is focusing on development and it takes place over time. You've got to think about this sowing seeds, fruitful mathematical seeds that will develop later. We're preparing the minds. So in many ways, these lessons are a bit of an act, a bit of a performance, where you're taking people through the stages and allowing them to think, because then you can trust that the lessons will allow pupils to think, because that's what they do. So in practical terms, you're going to have more than 20 activities that follow certain strands. You have an algebra strand, you have a function strand where you're focusing on graphs, and interpreting graphical relationships, a probability strand, a shape strand, a ratio strand, a data handling strand. So each of the lessons fits into the major areas of maths. What is different is giving the pupils time to reflect upon the thinking because it isn't about a calculation or an answer, getting it right, it's about an idea. And we can use the term metacognition to describe that, where the pupils are reflecting upon the thinking, the thinking about what's different, what's new, who helped them, you don't take anything for granted in the lessons. You probe the pupils. It's a chance to say, well, why do you think that? Who agrees with such and such? It's, an I it's very inclusive because nobody knows, because you don't give it away, what the answer is. So all the pupils can share their ideas so they all speak. There's a big focus on oracy and speaking and articulating your thinking. <coughs> so... I hope, we hope you enjoy the lessons. We hope you use them as a planning tool so you can get an overview of the lesson and really enjoy what happens in that hour or that 70 minutes with your, with your pupils. I think what I would like to say at the end is just where next? Where could you go with these activities once you've seen them, once you, you develop your pupils' thinking? These the pupils are coming to us from primary school where they're very keen, they're very social, they're very motivated, they're very engaging. Can we use those ideas to really challenge them, to prepare them for higher level mathematics? Are they really keen? They love the mathematics. They're, really, they're aware of themselves as mathematical beings. They've got mathematical agency, if you like. I just really hope you enjoy the insights that these lessons give you to you, the pupils that you have and the thinking that the lesson affords and you can use it as a kind of dynamic tool to make decisions about your pupils. And many pupils do, many schools use these lessons to start topics so they can really get a sense of where the pupils are at and where they can go next based on what the lessons tell them about the pupils. They are very informative. And we do hope you, you enjoy them as an addition to the diet of your pupils at Key Stage 3.